You guys are down to the last four days to enter to win this truck, and now every $5 is five entries towards winning that truck, but this deal ends in four days. March 18th at midnight, it's all over. On the road again, fam. We are on our way down the road. We've got that rental trailer that's been a complete nightmare. We're gonna return that, thank the Lord. I, you know, I was excited to use that trailer until they gave me the wrong size, and then after that, I was like, no. This isn't cool. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the videos. We did miss a day there. We might end up missing a couple more days. I've got the gender reveal party going on for my wife and I for our little one that's on the way. I might miss a couple days. It depends if I can get videos made up in time in advance. But I don't know. Can't promise you, but I'm trying to make the videos every single day as often as I can. So anyways, we're on our way to return the rental trailer. Then I got to swing by my parents to upload some videos because our internet at our new house is horrible. That's really fun. Um, but it's not a big deal. It's something we can work around it's just a little inconvenient but we can work around it and make things happen we are going to be starting on cleaning out that old moldy head out of the barn I don't know if you guys caught that in yes I think it was yesterday's video we started cleaning out the barn and getting the barn prepped for progress well the barn has a bunch of moldy old hay in it we got a flamethrower today not really a flamethrower just a like a high pressure lighter so we can try to get a lot of that hay taken out behind the barn in a gravel pit area and just kind of light that on fire and get that all cleaned up. We're gonna do it like one bale at a time and just keep it very, very safe. We do gotta get rid of it and there's not really anywhere we can take it nor is there anybody that would want it. Well, I was headed straight back to Reagan and I's house. However, I thought, you know what? I should probably grab this trailer with uh, some of our furniture since I was in the area. To save us a little bit of time here later tonight. We're gonna get this to the house, unload it, and then I'm not sure if today I'll be able to actually get as much video as I was hoping to or not. We really gotta do focus on moving everything back into our house, so that's top priority. Now for the fun part. Burning old moldy hay. Well, I was busy burning some stuff out of the barn that hay, and look what showed up. They are, I don't even know what these are. Oh, intercool, yeah, mud terrains. They are the 33-1250 R16.5. So these tires are gonna go on that truck right there. This stinking dog. Mm. He's glad he has a lot of place to run around though now, holy smokes. But uh, a couple big announcements for you guys in just a bit. Super exciting day for us, so we did just get in all new camo LNP beanies. The LNP is very discreet because I know that uh, if you are gonna wear these hunting or whatnot, maybe you don't hunt or maybe just like camo. It's very discreet. It's not just like a giant logo on the front of the hat and all crazy colors. It's very discreet. It's very low profile. And I think it does the hat proper justice. It looks really good. And also all new flex fit hats. So a true flex fit hat, no like uh, straps on the back, no Velcro, nothing. Cause obviously then it wouldn't be a flex fit. And those come in two color options right now. We're gonna make more options very soon. But for right now you have the heather gray and black or the heather gray and red. And these are mesh backs. We don't have other options available yet, but we will very soon. Put the beanie on. These are not like the big giant sock hats. They're just more like the, uh, more of the tight fit beanie. It's like a one size fits most type of deal. I mean, it's it's basically kind of like the flex fit hat. They fit about the same as like the flex fit hats. They just kind of snugly fit around and adjust to your head, just kind of like these. So anyways, guys, hopefully you guys want to go check those out. The beanies are up. There's three different color options. There's moss yoke, and then there's two different real tree ones. Not only that, but now every $5 is five entries to win. This is our best deal we are running before the giveaway ends. So if you want to get entered, take advantage of that because this giveaway is over literally in just a couple days. However, we are back in the shop here and we're going to be working on some more progress. The wife does have a hose here and a barrel and some stuff in the way because she's got horses she has to take care of in here. So we are going to be working on some of this and trying to stay out of the way of her stuff, but also getting done what we have to. Now, I'm kind of torn on what exactly I want to do here for this shop because I've had my dad give me some ideas and I've talked to some other people and they've given me some different pointers and ideas as to what direction I should go. The shop will fit, you know, two, three trucks, no problem easily too you can see how rosine she's on stocks of course but you can see how rosine fits in the shop problem is like i said with the post it's just a very tight fit so if we want to be able to have a more loosely fit you know operation here to where we can actually work around stuff we're gonna have to get rid of some of those posts just because you you know it's just yeah i don't know how to explain it but essentially 
um, they're just in the way and they're just taking up space. But once we get rid of those, it'll be so much easier to work in here. And I'm trying to debate what I should do for the walls, because I know that I was gonna insulate these walls, which is still the plan, but how do you think I should go about that? I could do just like that thin board insulation like in between here and cut it and piece it in between. And a part of me is like, hmm, do I do that? Or do I kind of board it like they did like this and then put like the big roll of insulation, like unroll that stuff and put it in between? I can probably get some pointers from my dad and see what he says because he's dealt with a lot of this stuff. I'm gonna get a couple pointers from a few different people that have done this kind of stuff. Um, and then also I'm gonna try to figure out if I wanna put any windows in to get some natural light in where I wanna do that. Because I don't know exactly where I would. Obviously it'd probably make more sense to do it around where like the panels are there for the sunlight. Or do I just like piece around it and like frame it out almost? to where the sunlight stuff like that can get in here just like that. But obviously I'm not just gonna like cut out a hole and leave it there, you know what I'm saying? I, want, I would have to seal it off and stuff, but it would be kind of nice to have like an insulated window that might make more sense if we're gonna insulate it as is. And the other question that I have is what will make more sense for insulating up top? Because I, I am trying to debate how I wanna do that as well. Part of me thinks it could make sense to just run boards spaced out throughout the rafters and connect them rafter to rafter like up and down, so to speak. Not like these two by fours, but if you were to take those and flip them on their side and run them in between like that, and then just put a sheet of steel that matches the barn color up, basically to where the colored side's facing down and just tack it right side up all the way down, then you could have somebody spray insulation and just like that uh, fluffy insulation and spray it all over up into the ceiling, up above the steel on the top side. Um, but if we don't do that, there's another option that could work. It could be a viable option. But again, it's all just ideas that I wanna to try to think through and figure out what's gonna be the easiest. Do we not do it that way? And do we take, again, the roll insulation and roll it in between those two by fours all the way up to the point and then have like a small set of scaffolding in here or something and you know some better ladders? But then that way we can just basically take like, I don't know if you would use OSB or if you would just use steel, but I have figured it, it might not matter once you're on the inside of the barn, but insulate in between those two by fours, going all the way up, all the way across, and then board that up and seal it off. That way your heat doesn't you know dissipate through the roof because obviously you can't just do the walls, otherwise heat rises and you're gonna lose it all anyway, so it doesn't do you any good. And in terms of heating, for heating in the shop, I'm probably just gonna run my diesel fuel heater because of course I like diesel, but no, that's not the real reason. The real reason is it'll run all day long, five, six bucks on diesel, at least at the current prices, which is really cheap. It's not always so cold to where I need to use it. If I do, it is like, you know, negative 20 out here and I wanna heat the shop up so that it's like 50 degrees in here, then it, it does run quite a bit on fuel. But if it's like today where it's already like 45 out here, obviously Obviously, the heater's hardly ever gonna kick on, therefore I'd hardly ever really need to use it. I don't know, just some ideas I'm throwing out there. Quick little update, I'll explain that in a second. We did get the post cut up there, and the reason I cut it like that, you can see the line straight through it, there's literally no, there's no pressure on the post. I mean, there's no weight on it, it's literally just, like, like they said, it's, those are pretty much just there, because they put them in the ground after the barn was built to put in stalls. Um, but anyways, so, I'm trying to work this ground out of the way so that I can get the ground basically worked down as far as I can so that once I cut the post, it's well below where the level of concrete would be if when we, if or when we do concrete in here. So that's the main purpose of that. Oh man, so we are back. We do have a trailer full of goods. Let me show you some of the goods here. I'm still debating selling this truck and like, do, like driving a first gen, I don't know. So we've got a set of Nito tires, and those are for the blue extended cab first gen project truck. These are the motos that came off of the big blue that we sold. Wife's fourth gen bumper, Target, because we have a gender reveal and we're gonna be shooting bows to pop balloons and stuff, so um, that's gonna be a lot of fun. Quick little trip. However, I could not find my saw, so the only thing I can think is that my saw must be in the barn somewhere. And here it is. It was actually buried in this truck bed pretty good under some uh, whackers and everything else. So I'm gonna take the saw, I'm gonna cut this pole out of here now that the horse has just walked out and uh, get this all out of the way so we can fill the hole back in the dirt. Well, 
post is gone and buried back up in the hole. Much better in terms of space in here, much, much better. I opened up quite a bit of room. It's not, of course, as much as I want yet. I'm gonna have to open up that post right there too. And actually with this post, I'm not sure if I'm gonna have to get rid of this post so much as I will just have to get rid of this wall, which really shouldn't take that long. The post I'm actually gonna keep, as you can see, the rafter's not even sitting on it, if I can put it. They did nail it too. I don't know why they did that when they put the post in there after the fact, but they tacked it to that um, with some nails. But anyways, I'm probably just, I'm probably going to leave that one post on this side just because like I said, I might put like a chain pulley, like a, like a engine hoist style there, not necessarily to pull engines, but you know, somewhere along here and get some, you know, restructuring advice to make sure that it's strengthened enough to be able to do that and handle that. Uh, maybe have to run something bigger and heavier from that post to this post to bolt it and sandwich it all together to strengthen it. Um, because of course, that's not one board that goes from this side to the next. They connect right there with that. So right now it's fine, but if you're gonna add a bunch of weight, like with a pulley and stuff, you might wanna reinforce that before actually, you know, putting a pulley in and then pulling something that's too heavy and then damaging the center of your barn. So um, that's still in debate, but this post isn't going anywhere until we figure that out. However, the one down there is gonna go soon, right down there, but we do need to remove this wall before we can get any further progress. So let's get to doing that right now. So we did end up getting that other wall, that second wall right there taken down. Opens up a lot of space. The only problem is it's hard to tell how much space it opened up because there's so much hay in this barn right now. Let me kind of show you that. So all this hay over here, you're probably wondering, you know, what's this all about? Well, the hay that's down here is pretty much bad. It's old. They said it's over a year old and it's kind of starting to mold and stuff. You can kind of tell in certain areas. It kind of gets discolored and weird. Um, well, it's starting to go pretty bad, so we're not feeding this out to the horses. We're getting rid of it, but obviously I can't burn all this hay one bale, you know, that all at once. So I'm just taking them out like basically like three a day. I'm just taking one out at a time and just letting it slowly smolder through and turns to dust and set one else out there in a big mud pit. That's just the way I got to do it. I don't really have anywhere to haul it off. There's a lot of it. There's probably like 30 bales left. But, you know, give it a week or two and it should all pretty much be gone. I step back here in the corner, you can kind of see how much space that'll open up because as you can see, Rosine sitting right there in the middle. So that's the width of one truck. Of course, she's on stocks right now. But once we remove not this front post, but that second one right back there, which is also just there for, you know, the horse stalls they were going to put in a long time ago. Once we get rid of that and get all this hay and all that stuff, it's going to be fairly open in here. Now, is it going to be ideal? No, but it's enough for me to get at least one truck in, whether it be on that side or this side or two trucks that I can pull one in the back door there because this is all gravel next to the barn so you can drive on it. You're not gonna get stuck or you know muddy or anything like that. But you can pull into the back there and have a truck pulled in at an angle and it can 100% be in the barn. Same with up here, there's tons of room up here now with no posts, which from here all the way over to there, a truck better fit in here, you know what I'm saying? Once this is concreted and insulated, there's enough room to get two trucks in that you can work around. Because if I took Rosine and backed her in, I could back her in at an angle and put her right here in the middle, and that would give you enough room to get on both sides of her, have a tool bench here in the corner or over there, and have another truck pulled in at the back there, and have plenty of room to work around them. Versus right now, she's trying to stay in between the two posts there. And so you don't really have much room, versus now we'll be able to actually pull a truck straight in over here you know, and have plenty of room to work around. It's not ideal. It's not like my dream shop setup, so to speak, but we're gonna turn it into something very usable for what we have to work with here. I get a lot of people asking, why don't you just build a whole new shop? Because the lay of the land, the way this property is, is not a lot of property. It's only a handful of acres here. Most of it's all pastured off and the horses don't need tons of pasture, but they need enough so that in the summer they don't beat them up and we can rotate them around. And there's four pastures that are about a half acre-ish a piece. And so when they rotate them around, it's pretty much gonna be probably one week in each pasture 
and then rotate them back around, back around, back around. And even that might not even be enough to really let the grass regenerate greatly. Pretty much substitute them with a bunch of hay. We're trying to play it smart. So in terms of building a barn area, we really can't afford to get rid of any more of the yard because of these two grass eating machines back here. And I had some people asking, oh, you know, why would you want to build your shop in there? Because there's not enough room to put a big truck lift in. Well, I'm not needing a truck lift. I don't need a truck lift. I don't do like a lot of suspension stuff here by myself. Cause if I do suspension, I just take it to a suspension guy that I know and he does it all. Devin, you know who you are. So if I need suspension stuff done, they can do it. This will be plenty of space to be able to do that to at least get me out of the snow in the winter and out of the wind and out of the rain and stuff like that. Do not forget to enter to win our 2001 Ford F-350 Super Duty with the 7.3 liter power stroke in it with $5,000 cash. If you guys wanna to enter to win that truck, you're down to I think the last three days, then it's over. Then that giveaway will be gone. Every $5 is five entries to win. That's the best deal that you're gonna have before the ending of the giveaway, which is in just a couple days. Can't wait to meet you when you pick up the keys to your truck. Thank you guys so much for watching the vlog. Let me know down in the comment section below, do you like seeing the progress on the shop or do you wanna see more of just truck stuff and me do this on the time that I have other than filming that or do you wanna see this every chance that I'm working on it on video? Let me know guys, thank you so much. I'll catch you in the next video, peace. Well everybody, diesel giveaway number 13 is here and it is almost gone. So if you wanna to enter to win this truck plus $5,000 cash, every $5 gets you five entries to win and then the giveaway will be over on March 18th. So if you haven't done so yet, get entered to win this truck because time is running out, we're gonna need a winner and it might as well be you. So head on over to lmpgear.com and get entered while you can.